Let's make a tofu scramble in three exciting ways. First, an Indian bhurji style scramble that's a cult favorite back home. This one was actually very popular at Imagine, our cafe in Mumbai. An Italian pesto scramble that works surprisingly well. And finally, an Indonesian sambal inspired one that showcases just how versatile tofu is and how creative you can get with a humble scramble. So let's get into it. Because there really is no excuse for the boring and bland scrambles that you get at most restaurants. <sighs> to start, we'll heat up some neutral oil in a pan. Once hot, add whole cumin seeds, chili peppers and onions. Mix to combine and add some salt. We'll then add the spices, some turmeric powder, red chilli powder and finally some garam masala. At Imagine Cafe, the chefs would use a secret ingredient as well. So stick around till the end to find out. To take it up a notch, hit it with some ginger garlic paste and cook till the smell of raw spices has gone. Now we'll add some tomatoes and you can flatten them with the back of your spatula to help them melt. Once mushy, make a well and quickly saute some green peppers. Now we can add the tofu. You'll notice right away why we love the scramble. The tofu immediately takes on the color of the spices and soaks in all that flavor. With bigger cuts of tofu, techniques like pressing, brining and dehydrating are used to take your tofu game to the next level. But here, it's as easy as crumbling the tofu and you're good to go. Garnish with some coriander because that's the law. And we are done. We like a consistency like this when it's not totally dry. Traditionally, you serve burji with ladi pao, but we use some of this rye bread that we really enjoy. We love having burji with some masala onions. So let's make some. To some sliced red onions, add lime juice, red chilli powder and salt. Mix to combine. Now it's time to plate up the bhurji with the bread. Garnish it with some more coriander because we don't want to break the law. And some of those delicious masala onions. If you haven't had bhurji before, you must try this. It's the antidote you need after all those years of boring and bland scrambles. It's delicious and a cult favorite for good reason. Next up is a pesto tofu toast. This one's inspired by the delicious and popular tofu scramble at The Sloth, a local vegan restaurant here in Bali. We'll start by oiling and salting the pan. Toasting the salt imparts a nice flavor and once it starts crackling, it's a sign that the pan is hot enough. So in go the onions. Once translucent, add the mushrooms. I like to salt progressively because that gives it a deep savory taste and by breaking it down into smaller steps, it makes it a little bit easier for me to judge how much salt is the right amount. We'll then add the tofu. After you've got a slight char and color on the mushrooms and tofu, you can add in the garlic. Saute for a bit and turn off the flame. Now we'll add some nutritional yeast, which adds a nutty cheesy umami flavor. And finally, the pesto. We like to wait till the end to add the pesto to protect its delicate flavor. Now the mixture can come down to room temp. While it cools down, we'll toast some bread with olive oil and salt. And to assemble, we'll spoon a generous amount of the mixture on the rye bread. Then some fresh tomatoes, salt, black pepper, fried garlic and some olive oil. It's a tried and tested combination of flavors, so you can't go wrong. This one was delicious. And it would have tasted even better with some chili flakes that I totally forgot to add. This might seem intricate, but the pesto was made the previous day and the fried garlic came with some Chinese takeaway. Everything else was either easy to chop 
or readily available. So the format of a scramble is quite clear. The savory base, the veggies, the tofu, and the taste maker. For our next dish, the taste maker is sambal, an aromatic Indonesian hot sauce that we have fallen in love with. For the savory base, it's onions and garlic followed by a mix of spicy and mild chilies. Some spring onion greens. Usually these are saved for the end, but I like to toast half of it because it gives it a great flavor. For the veggies, it's beans and carrots. These are locally abundant, cheap, and of a very good quality. Once you get a bit of a sear, you can go in with the tofu. And finally, it's time for the taste maker. Some of that lovely aromatic sambal and a bit of coconut milk. To exaggerate the fragrance, we'll rip up some lime leaves and add it in. We'll let it cook for a bit so that all the flavors can come together. And while it cooks, we'll prep the condiments. To a mortar, we'll add some peanuts with some salt, chili powder, oil, and some fresh chili. Then smash away till you have a chunky consistency like this. Then we'll prep some lemongrass. Get rid of the outer hard skin until you reach the soft pliable parts. We want just the white and light green part. And then chop it up as finely as you can into these slivers. This is an Indonesian meal, so this fragrant, slightly sticky local barley rice is the carb of choice. Add some of the scramble, then some sliced green onions, the chunky peanut chutney, lemongrass, and some of that fried garlic. Finally, spoon in some of that delicious sambal. We got this jar from Dua Hati, another local vegan restaurant. Clearly, my plating skills need a lot of work, and I don't really enjoy this part of cooking too much. But this was a flavor bomb. I thought it might be a bit dry, but because of the intensity of spice and flavors, the combination worked out really well. It's typical for Indonesians to have dry accompaniments with rice. And yes, they love rice for breakfast as well. The peanut chutney was really delicious, and the chunkiness added a nice crunch to things. So what was the secret ingredient in the bhurji at Imagine? Chef Savant would use this Madras curry powder and it was a fantastic idea. Overall, this was a fun video to make and all three preparations worked out well. I enjoyed Vidhi's bhurji the most. It's a classic. The pesto toast was tasty and the Indonesian one was a flavor bomb. The fragrant heat of the sambal has made it my favorite hot sauce. With cooking, I think it's especially important to be creative with what you already have, instead of focusing on the difficult to find and expensive ingredients that might be in fashion. And there's so much creativity involved. So relax and have as much fun with it as you can.